Hi, it's Ashley from Sweet Dreams Bake Shop. And yesterday I promised you that I was going to take this gingerbread house, which is just your standard gingerbread house kit that you get from the supermarket and turn it into something beautiful. This is the second transformation video I have done. You can go ahead and check out my other one in the right hand corner. I'm gonna be using a little bit of royal icing and a lot of fondant to decorate my gingerbread house today. Now you might be wondering why I'm using fondant when traditionally people use royal icing or a glaze to decorate their gingerbread houses. Reason being, it is a lot faster. And since I don't plan on actually eating this gingerbread house, I feel like using fondant is going to be just fine. It panels really nicely. And if you wanna put on royal icing details afterwards, it really ends up looking the same as when you just cover it in icing. In fact, I find it looks a little bit cleaner. So after you put on that royal icing, you're going to just stick your fondant on straight away. And then you're just going to take an X-Acto knife and cut off all the excess. And it's really, really easy to panel because it's not like cake. Nothing is going to indent in. This is really, really solid. Now I'm just showing you one way of how to transform this. So you could do multiple things with this fondant. I just wanna have a little bit of that side paneling in there like a traditional house, but you could honestly do whatever type of fondant detailing you want here. Just make sure that if you are going to be imprinting your fondant, you do it fairly soon after you place your fondant on there or else you're going to get cracking happening. Using fondant also means that I can cover up all those little indents that come with the gingerbread kit that I'm not really into. I don't wanna have those shapes on my gingerbread house. So this allows me to put in whatever shapes I do or do not want. Time for the roof portion, and it is really important that you give a nice covering to this roof portion, because if you don't put enough royal icing, then things can start sliding down due to the weight. You're going to use the exact same technique that you used for the side paneling for the roof. Now you'll notice that I actually have a lot of overhang first, and that is because if you cut it too small, it's harder to make it large enough. So make sure that there is a bit of overhang because it's really, really easy to cut it off with the X-Acto knife. I wanna have some texture on the top of my roof, so I'm making these little strips. And I'm going to start at the bottom and then I'm going to stack them accordingly. I will say this method is a little bit time consuming, but it really looks cool in the end. To adhere the fondant to fondant, I'm using a paintbrush and a little bit of water. But later on in the video, you're gonna see that I do take out my steamer. And I will say that steaming your fondant is a much quicker way of adhering things together. Thank you. 
Now, usually with all of my gingerbread houses, I have some seams that are showing that I don't want to show, obviously. So we wanna make sure we cover those all up. Now you could do this with royal icing, with nice piping that's really nice and thick, or you can use different borders. So today I'm going to be using my favorite pearl border. And to use that little mat there, all you do is you press in the fondant and it comes out really, really easily. I'm going to be linking all of the things I'm using in today's tutorial down in the description box below. My trick with creating gingerbread creations is just to make sure that you cover up all those little problem areas where things are showing. And I find that the more you cover and the more details you lay on, the better and more beautiful your gingerbread creation will look. I'm gonna keep the structure of this house super, super simple. In past, I have done really large gingerbread creations, but I just wanna keep with the general shape, so all I'm going to be doing is adding a little door. I'm not even gonna be putting windows on this gingerbread house. I just want it to be super glammed out and really simple. Give the house a good steam and then attach all of the pretty details. Today I'm using six lids and I'm going to be using some edible pearls as well. I wanna keep this looking really clean, so I'm not going to be adding a whole layer of fondant on the bottom here or adding any icing to create snow. I'm just going to use these little snowflake sprinkles and put them along the edge of the house. Now you could totally eat this at this point, but I'm gonna be adding on a whole bunch of glitter because I only plan on using this as a display piece for the whole rest of the season. However, there are edible or non-toxic glitters out there that can be consumed, so I will leave those down in the description box below as well. After you're done with the glitter fest, you can go ahead and paint this little chimney here. And I'm just using some edible paints that are water activated. And there you have it. We took a $14 gingerbread home kit and we turned it into a bakery level gingerbread house. Now, if I were to actually sell something like this, of course I would not sell it with that inedible glitter. I would charge $75 for these little gingerbread houses. If you've listened to any of my baking business tip videos before, you know that I feel like stock items are sometimes difficult to sell, but I do think little gingerbread houses like these, which you can let your creativity flow and make them super unique, would be a great seller. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you can be part of the Sweetie Fam. Right now, I'm uploading daily, so make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. Also, be sure to comment, request, or ask a question. I love hearing from you guys. Bye!